Hey guys, this is Shadow Knight Paladin and welcome back to my channel. So today we are doing another traditional piece and for once I'm actually not using my watercolors. And I am using my watercolor pad, there's a reason for that and I'll show that in the video later. And first things first, I'm sorry if you hear like scraping, machine sounding noises. Uh, there's a construction going on a house away and even though it's a house away, I can still sort of hear it from here and it's kind of loud and I'm not sure if the noise cancellation and audacity will be able to um, cancel out that noise so in case you do hear it, I'm, there's nothing I can do really. They start pretty early like even before I wake up. Okay, so this is a pretty long video. It's almost, it's like 10 minutes, it's 10 seconds away from 13 minutes long length. Um, that's mainly because this particular piece took me three weeks to finish. But to be fair, uh, I did it on the weekend since I have a job now. So a lot of my production is on like a Saturday, Sunday or Friday, Saturday, Sunday, depending on my workload. But also because this turned out to be a very detailed piece, as you can somewhat see from at this stage, there's going to be a lot more details coming in when I start doing the foreground items. But I really do love how it turned out. It's very close to what I had in mind when I was imagining it and I was doing thumbnails. It's very, it's very near what I wanted to do. Unlike with some older pieces where it's like, oh, it's not really there yet. Uh, it doesn't look like how I imagined it. This one is very close. Aside from some, some like anatomy issues. It's very, very close. So, I'm using my favorite castle, Polychromos, which I got for my graduation gift slash reward for graduating university. And this is the first time I've used them as the main medium of the piece. Uh, I first used these Polychromos with Chroma 2, which is like uh, a few weeks back. And then... Uh, but I used them as just to create definition with the watercolor and it's something I wanted to try so I used them there. But this is the actual first time that I used them as the main medium. And there were a lot of things that I learned in creating this piece and I would share them with you right now. So the first thing I learned is unlike with their classic set, so that's the one with the red box, the one that you buy when you're a kid. Um, those are wax-based, if I'm not mistaken, and they're very hard. They're very hard to blend. Like, you can do at most two layers, and after that, you'll need to find some other ways to make things blend together. Uh, with those, you can just use the color straight out of the box, and you can just use a, dark, a darker color to create shadows. Uh, with the polychromos, I found I would need to use something like three to four pencils just to create the color that I want. So for example, with the skin and this shirt and pretty much everything else, I would start with the base color and then use a darker tone to create the shadows and then I would mix in something like a purple to create more depth and then like the yellow as my highlight. And that created a lot more depth and it became a lot more how do I put this? Um, it became a lot more refined. Like, there was a lot more thought into it. It made the piece a lot more brilliant and dynamic. And it also made it look a lot more um, tied in together. And that's really interesting because I do that with watercolors sometimes. And it's a technique where you would use the colors in the background as the shadows to create, to make it look like they're in the same piece. But I've never really done that with digital works and other mediums. So these polychromos really really made me try out different things with different mediums. And I believe I might apply that technique to my other works in the future since it does so much. Like it you can see the difference between using just two colors or three colors against using four colors or more. That being said, it was a bit of a challenge. For example, with the skin tone, um, I needed to use 
for college just to create a skin tone and I wasn't used to that. I was a little surprised that I was having such a hard time to create a very good skin tone. And that's when I started doing, you know, the three color, four color layer thing. Another thing that I learned is that these pencils are super pigmented and like the lightest touch could render so much color. So I needed to get used to that. So you don't see it exactly, but I would erase a lot of stuff over and over again just to tone down the amount of pigment on the paper. But aside from that, these colors, these, these pencils are like, they really live up to all the reviews that people make about them. And it's a sort of a guilty buy slash I'm not really worth it type of thing, but it was my graduation gift. Like, I, I could splurge a little. So yeah. The reason that this video is so long is mainly because of the amount of detail that I decided to put in in this video and also because I had to go through a lot more steps than usual. Unlike with watercolors, I just mix the paint, put like two to three coats of paint which is like super fast and I'm done. With this, it, it takes quite some time to be able to complete a piece with pencils. So I really admire the people whose main medium are colored pencils now because I just realized how much of a long process it takes just to finish something. And this isn't even like super detailed or anything. So the thing that I wanted to go with this piece was pretty much this. I wanted at first, it started from the idea of drawing a bird or a girl, a lady with the bird wings singing in a cage. But I didn't really want to do the oppressive or like I'm trapped in a cage and forced to sing type of idea that's sort of like common. I wanted it to be a lot more free. I wanted it to be soft and sweet and inviting. So I came up with the idea of her sitting on like the ledge of the cage. So it's like a birdhouse of sorts and she's free to sit there and sing. And she's also free to leave because there's no gate that's trapping her in. And I just wanted something very light and sweet and soft and almost angelic. So I, yeah, I came up with this. <laughs> and um, I wanted the focus, uh, I wanted it to be balanced and not overwhelming with color. So originally the wings were supposed to be like brown or something. But when I started doing the colors on the girl, I realized that it might be too much, so I switched it to a cream to create the balance in the piece. And I could have used a bit more color here and there, but really, um, I just wanted it to be like harmonious and soft and nice to look at. There are also a few things that I realized regarding my art creation process is that I tend not to work on a single place for long amounts of time because I get really bored. So for example, with these flowers, I got bored halfway through. So I got my, um, what do you call that, the white pen to create highlights here and there. And once I had a break, I was able to continue on with it. So that might be a tip that could help you guys sometimes when you're like working on somewhat repetitive areas of your piece. If you get bored with it, you can just move on for a while and come back to it later. For some people, it's therapeutic to work on something repetitively or like it puts them in a chance. For me, I just like get super bored and tired of that color and tired of that particular area. It's actually super funny because uh, when I when I when I recorded this, my phone or most phones nowadays have a speed up function, so it would either record the video sped up already, or you have the option to speed it up later on in the gallery. My phone is a Samsung Galaxy phone, so 
it has the option to speed it up the, on, on the video editor side of thing. And it was really sped up when I imported this into Premiere, but that still ended me up with something like an hour of footage in total. So I had to speed it up again, I had to cut, up, I had to cut out a lot of stuff, and yet I still couldn't fit, fit it into 10 minutes. And at one point in the video, it's like the color of the pencil itself is just switching and you don't even see me. You don't even see my hand reaching for the other colors anymore. So that's how sped up it was. So for the background, I did go with watercolor. That's why I went to the watercolor pad in the first place. And that is for two reasons. One, I was lazy to cover a lot of area with just my colored pencils for the background. And two, because I really wanted to create a very smooth transition of gradient in the background. So I wanted to, in order to achieve that smooth gradient, I thought that the watercolors would be the best option to do that. But the main um, medium would still be the colored pencils. And since the watercolor turns out smooth and flat, it doesn't add too much texture. So that is also the thing I was trying to avoid. Like if I use the colored pencils, it would be like textured everywhere since the paper is textured. But I wanted it to be like flat and soft and just like super background and not something to spend a lot of time on, even visually. Or when you're looking at it, so that's how I reason that. So, we're nearing the end of the video. I'll be showing the preview now. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. Please follow me on Tumblr, Instagram, DeviantArt. Like or subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And I will see you around.